Robots capture a lot of different data, and being able to visualize how the robot is perceiving the world around it is critical to effectively debugging robotic systems. ROS ships with two visualization tools, RQt and RViz. Both are plugin-based graphical applications that let us visualize data, inspect our ROS system, and send commands to our robot. Each comes with a set of default plugins for common tasks, and you can write your own custom plugins for things specific to your robot. We'll start by looking at RQt. It's focused on 2D visualization and controls. Each plugin appears as a dockable panel, so you can arrange them however you like. We can start the tool by running RQt in any ROS terminal. When we start it up, we'll see an empty window because we haven't loaded any plugins yet. To load our first plugin, we'll go to the Plugins menu, we'll come down to Visualization, and we'll open up the Image View plugin. The Image View plugin lets us look at any image topic in our raw system. There are a couple controls on this plugin that are useful to know. The first is this drop down here, which allows us to pick which image topic we're actually looking at. The refresh button next to it will rescan our raw system for new image topics and repopulate that drop down's list. This save button on the very end will save a snapshot of the current image in our view to an image file on our file system. Those are the most useful parts about the image view plugin. We can close this plugin with these controls in the top right. And we'll open another plugin by again going back to the plugins menu in the visualization group and selecting plot. The plot plugin gives us a 2D graph for rendering any numeric value across time. We have similar controls to the image view plugin. Up in this text box, we can select the topic and even the specific field from that topic that we want to plot. In this case, we'll grab the topic performance metrics and select the field called real time factor. When we hit the plus button, it'll add that field to our graph and start scrolling with time. To the top left of the graph, you'll see a series of buttons that will let you adjust the graph and change settings for how the curves are drawn. And these small buttons in the top right are also useful. The left one lets us pause the graph. With the graph paused, we can take a look at any particular interesting event that's happened, or even save the graph as an image with this button. If we ever want to remove a curve from the plot, we can do that with the red minus button up here. That's the plot plugin, another useful plugin, this time rendering numeric data. Again, we can close the plugin with the red X up in the corner and open our final plugin that we'll look at today under the introspection group named Node Graph. Now this may look complicated. It's a snapshot of our entire running ROS system right now. Every oval is a node in our ROS system, and all of the rectangles that have arrows running through them are different connections, topics, or services that the nodes are using to talk to each other. You'll see these larger rectangles that are grouping other objects, and those represent namespaces. So up in this top corner, we have an IMU namespace that is grouping two objects because both of these objects are in that IMU namespace. Now, just like our other plugins, there are a variety of controls in this one that let us affect how the data is rendered. These two lines let us change the grouping and which objects are hidden in our display. This dropdown allows us to filter by what types of objects we're interested in seeing, whether that's only nodes or nodes and their topics, or even nodes and topics that are actively sending data. This text box lets us filter by the namespace of the objects in the graph. So for example, we could filter by the camera namespace, and we will only see objects that are in the camera namespace and those that connect to them. The next text box is the topic filter. It lets us filter down to only nodes that are interacting with a specific topic. For example, we could highlight the command velocity topic and see that it is connecting the teleop twist node to the planar move node. Finally, there is a refresh button in the top corner that will force the plugin to rescan the currently running system and show us any changes that have occurred in the graph. Those are three of the most commonly used plugins in RQt, but there's a lot more. As you saw in the plugins menu, even with just the built-in plugins, there's a whole variety of different things you can look at with RQt. Now let's turn our attention to RViz. RViz is geared more towards 3D data visualization. It supports two types of plugins. Panels provide dockable panels similar to those in RQt, and usually provide widgets for controlling our robot. Displays are plugins that render data. Most displays will render data as 3D objects, though some will add panels for rendering things like images. 
We can start rviz by running rviz2 in a ROS terminal. The window that we get by default has three main sections. In the center, we have our 3D viewport. This is where all of our 3D visualization data will be rendered. On the right hand side, we have the views panel. The views panel lets us change how the camera behaves in our 3D viewport. This dropdown will select how the camera moves and the zero button will reset our camera back to the home position. On the left is the displays panel. As we said, displays are individual plugins that render data coming from our robot. This panel lets us adjust settings for those plugins and add and remove plugins to change what data is being visualized. Finally, along the top, we have a toolbar that controls how we are interacting with the objects in our 3D viewport. Let's add a new display to this setup so we can see what data looks like in Arvis. We'll click the Add button in the Displays panel. We will select our plugin by topic. This shows us all of the topics that can currently be visualized with the plugins Arvis knows about. And we'll select the odometry display type. This display shows us the odometry data coming from our robot with each pose rendered as a red arrow. Now, if we drive our robot around with our joystick controller, we'll be able to see that the path our robot takes is traced out by these red arrows. This is a great example of how 3D data is rendered in Arvis. You can stack many displays to visualize lots of data about your robot at the same time. These two tools are super useful, and you'll spend a lot of time in them as you work on ROS robot projects. Take a look through the tooltips and documentation to learn more about what the built-in features and plugins can do.